the U.S. Senate Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation will come to order. This morning, we are having a hearing on the nomination of Phil Washington to be administrator at the Federal Aviation Administration. Mr. Washington, welcome. Congratulations on your nomination. And I know that uh, I think at least one or two of your colleagues, of our colleagues, uh, want to be here uh, as well to uh, do an introduction of you. So you're very fortunate to have them, and we will call on them in a minute. But as uh, we are expecting the arrival of our ranking member, I'm going to go ahead and start with my opening statement in hopes that we can keep going this morning. Today, the Commerce Committee is meeting to consider the nomination of Phil Washington to be administrator of the FAA. The safety mission of the FAA starts at the top with the administrator, and I hope to hear from you, Mr. Washington, about your vision for making sure that the FAA is the gold standard in aviation safety. Three years ago, Congress spoke clearly on needed reforms in the aircraft certification process in the FAA safety oversight. I worked with my colleague, Senator Wicker, uh, who was the chair of the committee at that time on that important legislation. Today, we need a clear commitment that this legislation is fully implemented and that these reforms, ensuring design oversight, mandating safety management systems, and holding manufacturers accountable are all adhered to. I want to especially thank the families of the 737 MAX tragedies for their important role in helping us craft and pass this landmark legislation. It is an important reminder that the FAA's leadership mandates extends internationally as well. The United States must be a strong safety voice at ICAO. We must raise the global safety bar on issues like pilot training and human factors. And the FAA administrator must also lead a large, complex organization. The safety agency has over 45,000 employees across different lines of business. Day in and day out, these workers answer the call and are engaged in the continuous job of safety oversight. We also need strong leadership at the FAA to continue the FAA reauthorization bill this year. The administration must deal with a myriad of new challenges presented by 21st century technology, advanced air mobility platforms, and manufacturing. And we also must build up our national airspace system, with the world, which is already the world's busiest, most complex, with next generation technology and operational redundancies. In addition, the aviation future must be sustainable. That means developing the capacity and infrastructure for sustainable aviation fuel, and the, the meeting our 2050 targets for net zero carbon emissions. So Mr. Washington, you're here today to explain how you and your leadership can meet that vision and those vital requirements of the FAA. I am pleased that our colleagues, Senator Bennett and Senator Hickenlooper, member of this committee, will be here to also say a few words on your behalf. But let me just say, you represent uh, a great career that we much appreciate. Mr. Washington is a 24-year veteran of the U.S. Army, where he rose to the rank of Command Sergeant Major, the highest non-commissioned officer rank an enlisted soldier can achieve. And he would be the first African-American confirmed to serve as the FAA administrator. This would be a landmark achievement. And there has never been an FAA administrator nominee that has come from the enlisted ranks. The U.S. Army taught Mr. Washington how to get things done and get them done right. And indeed, the Department of Defense awarded him the prestigious Defense Superior Service Medal for exceptional service to the country. And after military retirement in 2000, Mr. Washington joined the Denver Regional District RTD and earned his way to the top of that transit agency with an annual ridership of over 40 million people. Of over 40 million. In Denver, Mr. Washington implemented the nation's first and only 2.2 billion transit private partnership called Eagle P3 Project on time and expanding multimodal transit regions. And in 2015, was named CEO of Los Angeles County Metropolitan Authority. In Los Angeles, he oversaw a rail and bus network that transports 1.2 million passengers and managed a budget of $9 billion and oversaw 10,000 employees. He was also key in leading an expansion of LA Metro, managing approximately $20 billion in infrastructure and new rail connections between the Los Angeles International Airport. 
Then in 2021, he became CEO of Denver International Airport, the third busiest airport in the world. Now for my Colorado co colleagues, I'm not doubting, but I did have to look that up, and sure enough, yes, it's true. Uh, you move a lot of people through that airport. So he leads 35,000 employees and manages 1.3 billion operating budget, and under his watch, he set all-time passenger traffic records Nearly 70 million passengers traveled through its terminals, up about 18% over 2021 and surpassing pre-COVID numbers. So organizations like the American Public Transport Association, Airports Council, National Business Aviation Administration, and many other organizations, including uh, many of labor organizations, also support your nomination. So, uh, again, congratulations. Thank you for being here and look forward to having a chance to discuss with you the future of the FAA. I'll turn to my